There's a quick analogy I want to share that I think does a better job than I have in the past of explaining why Turf War is a poor competitive game mode. I was working this idea into another script I'm writing about the NA Championship Qualifier, but it was quickly becoming a deep enough subject that the tangent was distracting, so I want to explain this in a separate video before diving into that subject. Every major tournament the North American competitive community runs is in the ranked game modes, because we believe they have a higher level of competitive integrity than Turf War does. Competitive integrity is ensuring that the team that actually played better on the day is the team that's recognized as winning the competition. It's why people often argue and get upset over the results of boxing or gymnastics, where decisions about winning are made by panels of judges. Sometimes the audience disagrees with the judges' decisions and feel like the better competitor didn't win. It's why referees that are biased toward one team make people angry. They're making it less likely that the better competitors win. In other competitive games, and in the ranked modes of Splatoon, when you outplay your opponent, it gives you a cumulative advantage over them. In soccer, when you score a goal, that point is on the scoreboard for the rest of the match. You beat the other team once, and if they're going to prove they're better than you, they need to beat you even more times than you beat them by scoring two goals. In chess, when you outplay your opponent, you get to take one of their pieces off the board, and they're going to have to work without that piece to show they're better at the game than you on that day. In tower control, when you win a fight, you get to push the tower through the first checkpoint, and then if you win another in a row, you get to push it through the second checkpoint. Each of those actions require outplaying your opponent, and if you succeed in doing so, you gain points on the scoreboard that aren't going away for the rest of the game. It's noted by the game, locked in, that you managed to beat your opponent this many times, or you outplayed them exactly this much. In Turf War, there aren't multiple opportunities to outplay your opponent. There can often be one major decisive engagement between teams near the end of a game of Turf War that will determine who wins. The game lasts three minutes, but if you lose one fight in the last 30 seconds badly enough, no matter how many times you outplayed the opposing side, they have time in those last 30 seconds to undo your score, because your score isn't ever locked in. Beating them six times before that seventh time doesn't matter. A team that wins six fights out of every seven is the better of the two teams, but Turf War makes it possible to lose that way, which means it's not as good at determining which of the two teams played better. In ranked modes, advantages that you win are cumulative. In Turf War, you can be winning the game for two and a half minutes, but with no way to end the game, all it takes is a single mistake with 30 seconds left to promptly have all that success erased, and even though you played better for longer, the other team still wins. Imagine you're playing a soccer game, and you're up three points to zero with a minute left. But instead of needing to outplay you four times to score and take the lead back, the other team only needs to make one good play, because in just one play, they're capable of removing your three points from the scoreboard and winning by only scoring once. A competitive game can't just erase the scoreboard on the winning team. It has to make the losing team struggle against their previous mistakes and exceed them. It's not that Turf War has no competitive integrity at all. Teams know that that one fight is the only one that matters and they can set up for it and play it the best they know how. But in competitive sets, we play multiple games for a reason. Any game has at least some volatility. Even some of the best competitors ever can have unlucky fluke losses. So we look for consistency of results before we say that those players have decisively been beaten. The more times play is repeated, the more results we have and the more confident we can be that those results are statistically significant, that the player is consistently that overpowering, that we didn't just get unluckily unusual data to throw us off the scent of who we should be calling number one. In a full match of Turf War, a win-loss result 
might only be based on one repetition, one major engagement. All the other data, all the other engagements, all the other opportunities for one team to outplay the other, aren't factored in. So we have less information, and more potentially misleading information, from that match than we would get from playing, say, Tower Control. In Tower Control, a 74-32 to 32 scoreline tells you that a team was able to clear first checkpoint, but the other team was able to clear second, and had significantly more control over the match, played defense significantly better, and that they had control pretty consistently throughout, especially since a Tower Control match that doesn't KO lasts longer than a Turf War match. A Tower Control match can also last shorter than 3 minutes, but that's also a good thing, because being able to win multiple team engagements in a row is what rewards a team with the ability to KO, which is even more data. This game wasn't back and forth. It was a dominant performance where one team seized control and managed to avoid losing it repeatedly. It wasn't just one engagement lost, it was several in a row, snowballed well by the attacking side. Getting a blue shell to throw at the player in first place is a great mechanic for a party game where the goal is just to have fun with your friends. A lot of the time, it's a way for players of different skill levels to all have a chance of winning at least some of the time, and that's a valuable trait for some experiences. If we're going to play the game competitively though, if we're going to train ourselves for it, and want our opponents to be playing at their best to really test us, if we're going to use it as an honest, humbling vector for self-improvement, we can't accept a game mode that wipes the scoreboard. We can't accept easy ways back in that make it so the better player or the better team is more likely to lose. That's something Nintendo has repeatedly made us do in their official tournaments, and I'll be talking about the implications of that when I pick this topic back up in another video that's on its way.